what's up youtubers it's me again brian aka gamer five 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 one and i have light yes i got the light bulb fixed so finally i don't have to shoot in the dark like i did with my last video and so on but hey, hey at least that's all done but anyway enough with that part I am back with a, a, a video and a look back at a lot of the game stuff that happened in 2018, or at least the ones that I thought caught my attention though. Uh, no video game review for this week though. I'm trying to get to one soon, but for right now I'm focused on this one though. So 2018, what can I say about it? It was certainly an interesting year. We had the launch of a new hard hardware, the Nintendo Switch, along with the Xbox One X as well. Uh, and there were certainly a lot of good games that came out. But it was also a mixed year in some, some degree as well. And there were some controversies as well that caused some people to be a little bit upset, though. So why don't we get started? And why don't we talk about first with part one, though, which is the good, or at least what I thought was good this year. So we'll start with the first one, and it will be like, the first one, I mean, will be about Sony's first three months. And I have to say, Sony started off uh, January, February, and March with a bang, though, of 2017. The first game we got was Noel, N-I-O-H, pardon me if I'm spelling the name wrong, though, which is basically Koei Tecno's own version of what the Dark Souls series is. It has basically that, had a bit of that Onimushu feel, but also that game where you don't rush in too quickly or you're going to die very easily. Then again, like Dark Souls, you will die very, very quickly. And, but it was definitely a fun game, and that was a great way to kick off 20. Um, kick off 2017 for Sony, followed by the release of Horizon Zero Dawn, um, I believe in March as well. I, I think near the end of February, though, to be exact. A brand new spanky new IP, though, which is really great, and I applaud Gorilla Games coming up with a new IP and doing something outside of doing just multiplayer shooters like Killzone and so on. So it was very nice for the, very nice for them to release this new IP. And it certainly caught the attention of a lot of people, and it did very well. So here's the hoping we see what a sequel is going to be like down the road. I still haven't tried the DLC or anything. I still gotta try that though. And find, follow it off by the release of Nier Automata, if I'm saying the name correctly, which was a sequel to a game that not a lot of people played, but somehow this one took off, and it took off very well. And it was certainly the shot in the arm that Platinum rarely needed though after 2016 being sort of a bad year for them with Star Fox Zero which I'm a little disappointed with intent still disappointed with Nintendo of how they handled that one um Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and early 2017 with the cancellation of Scalebound as well so they needed some sort of a boost though and Near Automotive delivered that so here's the hoping that it's here's the hoping it's better days for Platinum as well but in either case though the first three months, at least as far as I could tell, for Sony were really good with three heavy hitters for their system. So, kudos to them on that. I mean, there were good other good games, but those were like the big three that really did very well for Sony, though, for the first three months, though, in 2017. Next one I want to talk about is Cuphead, and that is the success that game has had. And I will admit, though, I was a little bit concerned about that game in terms of the fact that the developers were willing to take a big gamble, put a lot of on the line, put their house up and all that stuff just to get this game out because this game was in development hell for quite some time, though. And that was a very risky move for the developers. But despite that, though, Cuphead seemed to do very well. I mean... So far, at least according to what the developers are saying, Cuphead sold like around 2 million copies, so obviously the developers must be pretty happy, and I'm sure, sure Microsoft is pretty happy about it as well. They really need to get some good exclusives out there to really get people into their buying the Xbox brand and all that stuff, which has been one of the biggest problems Microsoft has had since the launch of the Xbox Ones. Maybe things will turn around with them in 2018 with the Xbox One X, but we'll have to wait and see. But kudos to the developers who, um, with, the, with Cuphead though, and making that game a success though, 
it'll be interesting to see if a sequel does happen. We'll have to wait and see on that one. So, but even though I may not own an Xbox One or a PC for that matter, it is very pleasing to see that the developers who put time and effort in this was a, in the end was able to pull it off and I'm glad the game has found success. So kudos to the developers of Cuphead. Cuphead. Congratulations on your success with that one. Hopefully we'll see what you guys do further down the road. And last but not least is the Nintendo Switch. This was a this was a big moment. For, this was a do or die moment for Nintendo because the Wii U unfortunately flopped. As much as I really did not want it to flop, it just did. And unfortunately, the whole the whole thing it was just really a disappointment with the Wii U. So the Switch really had a big hill to climb. And somehow Nintendo managed to bounce back and make it work launching the system with Breath of the Wild, very much like what they did with the Wii when it came out in 2006 with Twilight Princess. And since then, the system has started to take off. The whole idea with the console, handheld, hybrid seemed to have worked very well and seemed to be clicking with audiences though. The system is selling very well, games are doing very well, even for several third-party developers as well. So it appears as though the Switch is definitely doing what the Wii U didn't do in that launch. And this was all in the first months. We got Breath of the Wild, we got ARMS, we got Splatoon 2, we got Super Mario Odyssey, we had ports of Mario Kart 8 and Pokemon Deluxe. And for crying out loud, Doom came to the Switch. Freaking Doom, the most like graphically enhanced game. Somehow they managed to pull that off in the Switch though. And it definitely was a very good 2017. It's going to be interesting to see how 2018 plays out for the Nintendo Switch. And there's no denying that there are issues Nintendo is going to have to address in 2018. Such as the online service and the voice chat, which I'm going to get to in the controversial mix part though. So there are certainly some areas Nintendo can improve on, but it seems to be that they are doing a good job getting in good third party support and definitely getting in indie developers as well. So overall, very good for Nintendo to see the Switch succeeding though. Very good it's clicking with the audience this time though. Here's to hoping 2018 becomes a good year for them. Well, so we'll have to wait and see, but until then, we'll, until then though, all I have to say is Congrats to Nintendo on a successful 2017 with the Nintendo Switch. Okay, uh, we're going to take a bit of a break, and when we come back, we are going to get to part two of our video and what I thought were controversial and what I had mixed thoughts about. So we'll take a bit of a break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video of what I thought was good, controversial, and mixed, and bad for 2018 in terms of regarding gaming. And let's just say there were still certainly a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of controversial things that came out over 2018 in terms of regarding gaming and particularly with YouTube as well. So why don't we get started? Uh, we'll start off with the first one, and this one has to do with um, uh, Resident Evil 7. Now, I want to be clear, I don't hate Resident Evil 7. I don't hate the game at all. I enjoy it. I'm glad the game is a return back to its horror roots, though. Some decisions I don't agree with, such as the whole item chest and all that stuff. I still like how it was done in Resident Evil 4 over how it is at 7. But for the, for the majority of the time, I did enjoy the game. Unfortunately, the game didn't meet its sales target um, when they initially forecasted though. Um, part of it though was I think they were looking to aim, I believe it was 4 million around March, but it didn't re it was below expectation. Now eventually it did reach its sales number and the game still did do well, don't get me wrong, it didn't exactly flop, but obviously it didn't reach the numbers that Capcom hoped for though. Hopefully this doesn't have an impact with the series going forward. Hopefully they can still keep that um, still keep that horror element going forward with when Resident Evil 8 happens or if Resident Evil 7 ever comes to the Switch or anything like that. Who knows if it will, but overall, a mixed year for Resident Evil um, though, especially with Resident Evil 7. Again, I don't think the game flopped, but it certainly 
uh, didn't meet the sales number Capcom was hoping for, though. Like I said, eventually they did and all. Oh, and if you want to read any of the articles of anything I'm talking about, some of them have the articles, some of them don't. I'll have a link in the description of the video. You can check it out yourself. Uh, the next one up on the list is basically um, Bethesda in terms of their Creators Club, though, and all. Now, for the most part, Bethesda has kind of been pretty good with 2018 so far, with a lot of releases of several good games. From Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, to Evil Within 2, um, to even support for the Nintendo Switch with Skyrim and the surprise um, Doom coming to it. Hopefully we'll see more support down the road. But that doesn't mean Bethesda is immune to certain criticisms. And one of the big ones for them this year was basically the Creators Club or the Creation Club, which is basically the whole paid mod things. And um, I, I don't use mods and all that stuff, so I don't know whole details, but supposedly there are some people who are unhappy with how things were handled on this to some of the mods, the price for some of the mods for some of them seem a bit unnecessary and all. I do hear that they probably have now fixed some of it and it's certainly better than it is, but again, I haven't tried it yet. But overall, as far as this goes though, this probably didn't get the positive response and everything like that. I understand what Bethesda's trying to do and I don't have a problem with paid mods if they're done correctly and all that stuff though. Then again, I never had. But in general, I'm not into mods and all that stuff. But Overall, it seems as though it still has some mix and some people are still not pleased with it in a way. Though, whether that will change in 2018 or not remains to be seen, but we'll have to wait and see about that. But overall, the whole Creation Club certainly, got, certainly left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths in regards to the whole idea that Bethesda came up with. The next one has to do revolving Nintendo. And yes, as much as the Switch was a success for Nintendo, they're not immune to criticism as well. They certainly have their share of criticism. And they got two that I saw that really deserve, they deserve to be criticized. The first one is the whole online thing with the voice chat. And the whole voice, their idea of a voice chat was through the voice, the app that they had for your, you know, your phone and all that stuff to speak through. And people hated the idea, especially when it originally came out where you could not turn off your phone or it had to be on the app, but if it, was turned off the app could not work and everything like that that just added more problems to the app in general now eventually they fixed that though but unfortunately it's still still is not sitting well with a lot of people combine that with a headphone set that they showed for japan that was for splatoon that looked like it was more work into something that really should not had been there though it, it, it feels like where Sony and Microsoft did with their voice chat and even I'm sure PC has it easy as well Nintendo just added more layers to something that really shouldn't re really require all that work so I do hope when their online finally eventually starts up though assuming it's not delayed till fall 2018 that they fix the voice chat thing or just go back to the drawing board or team up with Discord for that matter. But in either way, the whole voice chat approach that Nintendo has done just... Look, they do things right, but then there's times they do things wrong and the voice chat was definitely wrong on that one. The second part of revolving Nintendo has to do with a game that came out for the Nintendo 3DS and that was Fire Emblem Echoes. Now, I did a review of that game and I still enjoy it though. I still think it was a fun... Fire Emblem game in general though but the one issue that people had with it and I kind of do have to agree with them on this is the season pass that came with it apparently the game was I think like $39.99 when it came out and then you had sort of a $40 season pass that came with it which came to a grand total of you basically spending up to $80 for a 3DS game now to be fair though to some degree it's not on the same level as what EA did with Star Wars Battlefront 2, where they paid, where they charged $60 for a game with little to no content and $50 for season pass with little to no content. There were content in this game, and Nintendo has been very good, at, at the very least has been somewhat good when it comes to their DLC and what they offer and all that stuff. But still, 
I, I can understand why people want are could be upset about this and has to do with the price for the season pass and we've seen how season passes can get a bit outrageous and all though it's still a good game but that season pass kind of left a little bitter taste into some people's mouths though, though and i can understand why some people would be upset about it though the next controversy mix i want to point out is ukulele now this has been a game that had 2018 was kind of very controversial for this though there was the game that finally came out to mixed reviews ranging from the fact that the game felt a bit unpolished and unfinished eventually an update was to it to basically you know um jim sterling giving a negative review and some people criticize well why didn't he just review the game now that the patches came out he likes to review the game in its purest form though though but in general the game has had some controversy though um i played it I like it, then again, I'm basing it off my Switch version though. I'm not saying it's gonna dethrone Mario Odyssey, but it's still a good game. But probably the biggest controversy this game had was the whole JonTron issue though. Um, <clears throat> as some of you are aware of, um, JonTron, I think was in a debate with someone and said some things that many view as sort of like an alt-right and pro-Trump kind of response to it that came off as being some view as being racist though. The fallout of all this was that the fact that the game, uh, fall, I mean, was that John Tron lost some subscribers. I mean, I'm sure he's still on YouTube and all that stuff. And Platonic made a decision to basically say that they are not going to, you know, they decided that they're not going to work with John Tron or anything like that. And kind of was like, it was it's just kind of an, a very controversial thing with the game though and when the reviews came out there were some out there that were cheering for glad that this game got bad reviews whether there were those who were because they were upset with Kickstarter or because of what Platonic did with JonTron who knows but the whole thing was just very controversial with JonTron evolving ukulele though I still like ukulele um, I still think the game's fun. It may not be nearly as good as, say, Mario Odyssey, like I said, but it still is. As for JonTron, you know, I don't like his views. I don't like his alt-right opinions and all that stuff. But you know what? It is his YouTube channel. He can say whatever the hell he wants to say. And if that's what he wants to believe in, fine. But people also have a right to unsubscribe to him if they don't like his content. And Playtonic has a right not to work with him again if they, they if they don't want to. So, yes, he's entitled to his opinion. I don't disagree with that. But Playtonic is also within their right to not work with him. And people are within their right to not to unsubscribe to him or not. So... And odd. So, yeah, good game though, ukulele, but it was also marred in a lot of controversies um, in 2017 though. Alright, the next one I want to talk about, and this is one I kind of came up with, and that is basically what I call, refer to as Review Gate, and it involves Breath of the Wild, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Jim Sterling though. Um, I'm sure all of you know Jim Sterling is known to be very controversial. And I've been a fan of his YouTube channel before. There are times I agree with him, and there are times I kind of disagree with him on a lot of things, though. Um, and But when Horizon Zero Dawn and Breath of the Wild came out, it just sparked a whole lot of controversies. Um, the first one, of course, is had start with Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, the game got rave reviews and all that stuff, which is good. The game does deserve the high praise it does get. However, when the game went up on Metacritic, people started to see that the Breath of the Wild was scoring higher than Horizon Zero Dawn. That upset some fanboys, some Sony fanboys, really bad, going as far as trying to go into user reviews to give Breath of the Wild like like poor score and all that stuff, which it was just utterly ridiculous. Then came um, the whole breath of the wild incident where jim sterling controversial figure as he is basically gave the game a 7 out of 10 and this upset some people particularly some nintendo fans and some nintendo fanboys so much that some went as far as to dos and attack jim sterling over his review of breath of the wild now i will like to say that i don't agree with jim sterling in terms of giving the game a 7 out of 10 i played it 
I enjoy it. I think it's one of the, um, I won't say Dethrones Majora's Mask in my opinion, but it's definitely one of my favorite Zelda games out there though. I like the direction they were going with it though, and I would like to see them evolve with that direction in the next Zelda game though. But as much as I don't agree with Jim Sterling's review on this though, I will say that it is his YouTube channel, it is his website, he can give it whatever review score he wants to give it. If he wants to give it a 7 out of 10, that's his call. So I'll defend his right to do it though. And I do want to stress that I'm not saying he deserved to be DOSed or attacked for giving Breath of the Wild a 7 out of 10. But, but, I can't help but feel to a certain extent that he kind of opened himself up for this though. Especially when he did a video saying how it's, uh, Jim, Jim Position one, on uh, how it's okay to pirate and steal from Nintendo though. Even if it was meant as a joke and all that stuff. So, and not to mention he got into another controversy with Hellblade and all that stuff and that kind of stuff. So, I just think that both sides with Horizon Zero Dawn and Breath of the Wild, um, it basically just, I think some people just took it way, way, way too seriously. I'm, I mean, it is just as bad as those who are taking The Last Jedi way too seriously, though. I'm not saying you have to like the movie, but if you're going as far as calling people saying that if they like it, oh, you got paid by Disney to signing a change.org position to shut down Rotten Tomato, like we saw with Suicide Squad, and to those using it, especially with the Ghostbusters and the sort of call stuff, I'm going to come out and I'm going to say the same thing to them as I just said to those who took Breath of the Wild and Horizon Zero's Dawn way too seriously. If you're one of those kind of people, you seriously need a new hobby or you really need professional help. I mean, I'm sorry, but if you're taking a review score that seriously, there is something seriously, seriously wrong with you. If, wrong with you and all, all right? Again. I don't agree with Jim Sterling's review of Breath of the Wild, but it's not enough for me to lose sleep over it in any way. Same with Horizon Zero Dawn. I, it, you know what? If it, it's got its high score, it's got its score, it's got its praise, and it did very well. So I don't see why you have to be upset just because her Breath of the Wild score higher than Horizon Zero Dawn on Metacritic for crying out loud. So either way, it was just that's my take on the whole what I call review gate to be exact. And last but not least for the controversial and mixed though, we're going to be talking about basically what happened in 2017 which is the YouTube apocalypse in which advertisers <coughs> excuse me, started to leave YouTube and started to pull their ads out from YouTube channels when it was learned that some of their advertisement was appearing on channels that either were controversial or just used from shock values to even some reports saying that they appear on like ISIS like terrorist sites like on, on their YouTube channels or whatsoever so it really created a damaging effect for a lot of YouTubers and so on and while I can understand from a content creator's perspective for those who rely on them for those ad monies and all that stuff the monetization for the videos though and it's not fair to them because you know what it's not their fault because a couple of bad seeds did that did theirs did all that though at the same time i can understand from the advertisers perspective they don't want to market their stuff on stuff that is considered controversial to them and it's that's kind of a debate about that so but i can understand from an advertiser's perspective as well so it was a very very tough 2017 for a lot of youtubers though um, eventually, it looks like they sort of changed things around. Hopefully, things will get better with it and we can put the ad apocalypse behind them. But there are concerns it could come back because it all it takes is another YouTuber really causing a lot of damage, though. I mean, recently we still had the old issue with PewDiePie over him holding up a telling paying some people to hold up a sign that said kill all the Jews and that got YouTuber to cancel the show and all that stuff to him dropping the n-word while playing players on no battleground I assume that apparently the developers want apparently there's a report that developers want to demonetize any video with him playing the game though I don't know if he's really racist or not I never met the guy so I really don't know to just recently Logan Paul and what happened in Japan at so-called Suicide Forest and how 
that just that whole incident right there it's just I'm not just that when you have those I'm not saying it's I'm not saying I hate these guys or anything but when you have them become the face of YouTube and they pull these kind of antics it does make give other youtubers a bad name not all youtubers act like this so it's 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 very tough with a whole youtube ad apocalypse though i mean i can understand from content creators perspective but i can also understand from the advertisers perspective i am hoping at least youtube at least for their part has fixed this problem and hopefully we can move forward beyond this but that doesn't mean that i'm not worried that we could see another ad apocalypse happen at all hopefully it doesn't happen in 2018 but we'll have to wait and see all right uh, we're going to take a bit of a break, and when we come back, we'll get to what I thought was bad in terms of gaming and in, gaming in 2018. And we have two, at least, as far as I know. So we'll take a bit of a break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with the third and final part of this video on terms of what I liked, what I what I liked, what I thought was controversial and mix, and what I thought was bad. And for the bad, bad for part three though, I can only think of really two, at least as far as I am aware of though. And that has to do with two games that unfortunately got the most negative attention out there. And that is both Destiny 2 and Star Wars Battlefront 2. For Destiny 2, if I have the article right here, it has to do with basically, um, has to do with the whole Everest, which is basically an in-game training company, company where players can pay real money for loot boxes, microtransactions, that might come in the, kind of with armor, ships, shaders, weapons, mods, or ghosts, all goodies that players used to earn through the play. And that has sort of pissed off some people who don't like the idea and all that stuff and the game not to mention there has been some reports that the game may have been in development much shorter than what many people thought they thought this game was in development for a while but it wasn't and ever since its launch it's been into mires of controversies and controversies though which is really unfortunate because I I played the game and I thought it was a bit of an improvement over the first one though but just like the first one it's managed to dr bring up more controversies though and well we'll have to wait and see what happens with a destiny 3 if that does happen i wouldn't be surprised it is but it w would be interesting to see if people are willing to work money over for that game again though but in either case the whole controversy with destiny continues but as bad as that was that is nothing nothing compare to star wars battlefront 2 and the Buckle of a mess that that created though with the whole thing with the whole pay-to-win kind of microtransaction or games as a service EA was promoting though and The whole controversy that got worse when it got to the point that Disney had to call EA and Basically gotten to the point where they had to take the microtransactions out to even now governments across the world in some countries including here in the US by a by Hawaii State Senator of the name of Chris Lee is pushing for legislators that will treat games with microtransactions as a form of game gambling to not that these games cannot be sold to minors though it the fact that this happened the fact that it happened to of all things, a Star Wars game is pretty amazing considering that other games have done it, but it's the fact that it took a Star Wars game to push this whole issue within in the mainstream is just so amazing. In fact, EA in general, and this is not only with Star Wars Battlefront 2, but EA in general just had a terrible 2017 with um, Mass Effect Andromeda, how that fortunately did not go sit well with a lot of people. Uh, sorry, people are worried about Anthem and think that that game is going to bomb and that e and that Bioware will be the next one on the chopping blocks. Their poor E3 uh, showing, which unless you're into FIFA, then nothing and that really did not interest you in any way. The closing of Visceral's games 
and of course the Star Wars Battlefront 2 debacle. Not to mention EA got roasted at the Video Game Awards, ranging from Bethesda putting out the Save Player 1 to one of the awards person who was doing the nominees and say, oh, it requires a microtransaction and all that stuff. I mean, this whole thing just blew up big time. And quite frankly, and to me, quite frankly though, I think they deserved it. I really do believe EA deserved for what they pulled in 2017 though. Now, granted though, it appears as though despite the microtransactions and controversy and so on, there are reports coming out the game still managed to sell well, although less than what Battlefront did when that came out though. But still, still, it's obviously not something Disney wanted though. Outside of the whole Last Jedi controversy, which my personal opinion is I think it's ridiculous, this was not something they want to need, that Disney needed though. And well, it's gonna be interesting to see how 2018 plays out with with um, EA though. As for Disney, I said this before when this controversy happened and I'm gonna say it again. My personal opinion is I really think Disney should reevaluate their contract with EA. After what this got pulled, after what was pulled with this though, I really think they need to look at other developers and not focus their game and sign this 10 year deal with EA. I really think they should look at other developers as well that probably could do actually a really good Star Wars game for crying out loud. It's just, it's just sad that it got, that this is what Star Wars Battlefront 2 is probably going to be more remember of. It's the controversy and all. And unfortunately, like I said, EA does deserve to be blamed for this, for what they pulled. They tried to push the games as a service though, and now the whole controversy just blew up right in their face. Now, whether or not legislation's emerged from this, we don't know, but one thing for certain is that a lot of developers that push the microtransactions are now going to be looking at this and figure out what can we do to not create the mess that EA made, though. So, either way, it, I, it, I, it's just really sad that this happened to Star Wars Battlefront 2. Unfortunately, EA did this to themselves. They chose to put this out there, and this is what it came out of it, though, so... Very unfortunate, though, though, but they deserve it. They, I, that's all I could say is that EA truly deserved it, though. Same with Activision with Destiny 2, but it was this game that really pushed it in the limelight big time, though. <laughs> okay, um, this concludes this video. Uh, what I thought was good, controversial mix and bad for 2018 in terms of gaming and again these are my opinion what are yours do you agree with what i said on this list do you disagree were there other things i should have put on that list as well do you have a difference of opinions and so on as always sound off on the comment section below let me know what you think i hope you hit that like button i would appreciate it and i hope you do subscribe to my youtube channel also, feel free to share this video if you want to, and feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can either be through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good evening then. Bye!